Hi, everybody, and welcome to Death Wizards. This time, it's a battle between two necromancers with completely different necromantic powers. They have approached the same area in search for more power, and they are now so close that battle cannot be avoided. But before we get to that, we will have to see if Sarasso's lair is attacked. After his latest story mission, there is a risk that heroes will attack his lair if he rolls 9 or more on a d10. Ooh, that was close. It was an 8. The lair is safe for now, and the mummy and the ghoul guarding the lair will be left in peace. So back to the battlefield, where Sarasso will face the necromancer Ostokar. So to begin with, I have rolled for the terrain, I rolled ancient battlefield, and I got forests, ruins, and cracks. So this is how the battlefield will look. And before we find the objectives of this battle, let's meet the necromancers. Ostokar is a very powerful war reaper, and he is exactly the opposite of Sarasso. He is fast, has a high offense and a great defense. His weaknesses are resist, and he has a necromantic energy of 11. He has the abilities Reaper of Flesh and Talents of Darkness, and then he has the usual necromantic powers, and besides those, he has Ruinous Touch, Whip of Darkness, Shadowed Escape, and Black Blade. It's undeniable that he is most effective up close with his War Reaper skills. He has brought 7 points worth of undead, a rating 3 ghast, a rating 2 white, and a rating 2 shadow. With the exception of negative bolt, Ostokar or his undead followers are not very effective in ranged combat, so the trick is to get as close as fast as possible to Sarasso. And that is exactly what Sarasso is trying to avoid. He is weak in offense and defense, decent in resist, but he has a very high necromantic energy of 19. Sarasso is a stitcher. He has the ability Aura of Repair and the necromantic power Remove from Harm. And besides the other regular necromantic powers, he has Bolster Undead, Energy Infusion, Grasping Tendrils and Reanimate. He has also brought 7 points worth of undead, a rating 3 ghost, a rating 2 spectre, a rating 1 skeleton archer, and a rating 1 zombie. Both the skeleton and the spectre can perform ranged attacks, so Sarasso and his hold are most effective in ranged combat. The skeleton was damaged in one of the earlier battles, so it's able to move one point less. This is a battle about power and domination, but let's also take a look at the secondary objectives. We will begin with Ostokar, and he rolls a d10, and it's a 3 that is powerful sample. Ostokar must destroy the highest rating undead in Sarasso's horde, and that is the ghost. So the ghost will be the target of Ostokar. Now let's see what Sarasso has to do. He rolls a 10 so he can decide for himself. And he will choose Hunt for Treasure. The first time Sarasso or one of his minions comes into contact with one of the four main terrain pieces, he will roll a d6. On a roll of 5 or 6, he will find the treasure. And the main terrain pieces are the cracks, ruins, and forests in each of the four quarters of the battlefield. Finally, let's see if there are any unusual occurrences in this battle. And with a roll of three, there are no unusual occurrences. Now both the necromancers have to bid necromantic power to see which one of them will activate first. So they will secretly pick an amount of necromantic energy and reveal. And we know that Sarasso has a lot more necromantic energy than Ostokar. Sarasso will bet two and Ostokar only one necromantic energy. Sarasso will activate first in round one.
Sarazzo's trusty zombie will activate first. He will move four inches and he will get in contact with the huge tree here. So maybe the treasure is hidden here. Well, no. And that would have been way too easy, of course. So the zombie will stay. Next up, Sarazzo will move the ghost forward. Not too much though, eight inches will be enough. Then he will use his first necromantic power. He will spend two energy on energy infusion. And that enables him to push the skeleton archer forward. He is slow because of his damage, but he will be able to move far enough to get in position behind the fallen tree. And then Sarasso will also move slightly forward. Now, Ostokar will activate and he himself will move forward. He can move seven inches. He will take position behind the rock here. And from this position, he can see and he is also able to reach the skeleton archer with a negative bolt. So Ostokar will spend three energy and he will roll four d10 versus the resist of the skeleton archer. Luckily for the skeleton, there are only two successful dice, so that will give a damage of d10. And Ostokar rolls three. The skeleton archer will take damage. He only has a durability of seven, so he cannot take that much. Then Ostokar will move his ghast forward. And the other two undeads are rating two, so only the ghast is able to move in this activation. Back to Sarasso, and he will activate the Spectre. It's a rating two undead. The Spectre can move and also reach the ghast with an attack. Five offense versus five defense of the ghast. And that one was a roll of six, so there is several hits. And there is also a critical hit. The Spectre will do five points of damage to the ghast. And that's from a durability of 15. The skeleton archer will fire an arrow towards Ostokar, and that's a very optimistic attack. But maybe he can force Ostokar to use a dark shield. He has a defense of 8, and the skeleton archer an offense of 3. So it's not looking too good, but let's see. No, there will be no hits. As expected, Ostokar will be very hard to damage, physically at least. Maybe Sarasso can change that, but instead he moves to a position out of line of sight of Ostokar, but he can see and reach the ghast with a negative bolt. He will spend three necromantic energy and fire his necromantic power. And the ghast has a resist of five. And there are enough successful hits to do 1d10 of damage, but not the extra d6 of bonus damage. But let's see what Sarasso can do. He can roll a 10 and 10 damage to the 5 that the ghast already has is enough to eliminate the ghast. What a powerful spell by Sarasso. Ostokar was definitely not expecting that. And as the last part of Sarasso's activation, he will use his aura of repair to repair damage from the skeleton archer. Ostokar will activate again. He will move to the other side of the rock. He cannot do anything about the destroyed ghast, but from this position, he is within a range of 12 inches to the spectre, and he will use his necromantic power, Whip of Darkness. Against the Spectre's resist of 5, he will roll 3d10, and for each success, he will do 1d6 of damage. There is only one hit, so he will give 1d6 damage to the Spectre. 5 points of damage. The Spectre has a durability of 8, but what's worse is that the Whip of Darkness will draw the Spectre towards Ostokar and position him not more than one inch away. So now he is very close to Ostokar, and that's a place no one really likes to be. Then Ostokar will move the white as well as the shadow. They are 
not in reach of any of Sarasso's undead, but they, of course, can move slightly closer. But he's also careful that he does not move them too close. He knows, of course, that Sarasso is very powerful in ranged combat. That was the last activation of the first round. None of the necromancers completed their secondary objective. Ostokar managed to damage the spectre and the skeleton archer, but Sarasso destroyed the ghast in return. That leaves Ostokar with only two undead remaining. Let's go to round two. The necromancers will receive three additional energy at the beginning of the round. Sarasso is now up to 15 and Ostokara will have 11. So let's see how much they are willing to risk to activate first. Sarasso will bid four necromantic energy, Ostokar only two. And they will lose this amount of necromantic energy. So once again, Sarasso will activate first and he will get the Spectre out of the way. So with a long movement, the Spectre comes into contact with the Ruin, and this time he will find the treasure. Sarasso has completed his secondary objective. Next up, the Spectre will attack the White. Against a defense of five, there will be three regular hits and one critical, that's five points of damage to the White. The Spectre has proven to be one of the most effective minions. Sarasso is really pleased. Sarasso himself will activate next. He will move right into the center of the battlefield. And from this position he can see Ostokar as well as the white. Not the shadow though, he is hidden behind Ostokar. Sarasso will use five energy to cast Grasping Tendrils, a spell that will hit the white as well as Ostokar. The white has a resist of six, and with three power dice and two hits, Sarasso will now roll 2d3 of damage. And that's pretty decent. Five more points of damage to the white. The white has a durability of 14, but it's also slowed down. Now, Sarasso will roll against Ostokar only with a resist of four. Again, three power dice, and there are hits this time as well. Exciting to see how Ostokar will deal with the damage, and it's six points of damage. And of course, Ostokar will be forced to spend one energy on a dark shield. He will negate all the damage. Sarasso is now down to 6 necromantic energy, and his final action will be to use his aura of repair on the skeleton archer. So he can repair 1d3 of damage, and 3 damage that will remove all the damage from the skeleton. He is almost as good as new. So why not activate? He will move and take position close to Ostokar. Ostokar has a high defense of 8, and the Skeleton Archer will fire, and he will hit only one point of damage, but that will draw one more necromantic energy away from Ostokar. Finally, Sarasso is able to activate the zombie, and it's a very slow zombie, only 4 inches of movement, he will move a bit around the battlefield. Maybe he will try to ambush Ostokar, who knows. Ostokar is taking a lot of heat at the moment. He will have to do something. He will activate the shadow, and the shadow is within reach of the skeleton archer. A defense of 3 versus the shadow's offense of 5. Ooh. With 4 hits and one critical, that's six points of damage, but the shadow also has the drain energy ability, so the skeleton archer is weakened. He will negate one of the damage, because he's nothing but bones, but still he'll take five points. He's still standing though, but he will have negative modifiers because of his weakened condition to offense and defense the rest of the turn. 
But Ostokar is not finished yet. The white is slow, but he is close enough to reach the spectre with an attack. That will be defense 4 versus attack 4. But the white has a crippling strike, so it will do 3 points of damage with every critical hit. Let's see if there are any. And there is one critical hit, and the rest will also hit. That's six points of damage. The Spectre has already been damaged. That's way too much. The white will end Sarasso's favorite spirit once and for all. At least for this battle. Now it's time for a surprise move from Ostokar. He will spend two necromantic energy on Shadowed Escape. That will enable him to teleport and use the teleportation instead of movement. And he will teleport way past Sarasso, and instead he will go for the ghost. Of course, that's his secondary objective. The ghost has a defense of 6. That's decent, but Ostokar has an offense of 7. But that is not the most effective attack. There will be 3 hits, no critical Hits, but also no critical failures, and that's very important. Critical failures versus the ghost will harm the attacker. But in the end, the ghost will take three points of damage. The ghost has a durability of 13, and now Sarasa will turn around and command the ghost to fight back. The ghost has an offense of 6, Ostokar a defense of 8. Let's see if the ghost can damage Ostokar. And there is only one hit. Again, Ostokar proves to be very tough. So one damage. And Ostokar will not use his dark shield because Sarasso has not activated yet. And he will not be able to use the dark shield in this attack as well as the next. So he'll take one energy of damage. He's down to 4 now. Now Sarasso will activate and he will begin with Aura of Repair. He will repair 1 damage from the Ghost. And then what? He will move away from Ostokar. He has another target. He will spend 3 energy on Negative Bolt once again. And he will fire at the White with a very good chance of destroying the white once and for all. The white is already damaged, and with a resist of 6, let's see what Sarasso can do. Two hits, not enough to give bonus damage, but still enough to roll one d10. The white has a durability of 14, so if Sarasso can roll four or more, and wow, it's a 10, no risk taken here. He will fire 10 points of damage against the white. That will take it to 20. It will not only be destroyed, but completely obliterated. And the ruins will fall down. So much power. The white is history. And Sarasso will absorb the energy from the remains of the white. Now only the shadow is still standing besides Ostokar himself. And Ostokar will activate, and now I forgot that he cannot use a necromantic power and attack in the same round. He spent two energy on Black Blade that gives him an increased offense of three, and then he will attack the ghost, but it will be corrected after the attack. Now first let's see how much damage he's able to make. And there is a lot. But there is also a roll of 1, a critical failure, and that will give damage to Ostokar himself. Each critical hit will be 3 points of damage because of the Talents of Darkness and then one regular hit. So that will be a total of 10 damage to the Ghost. That will take it to 12, just not enough to destroy it. But as mentioned, the ghost will also damage Ostokar. Because of the aging vision, a critical failure will give 3 damage to the attacker. So Ostokar is 
forced to use his dark shield to negate the three points of damage. And then we'll have to correct that Ostokar cannot attack and use Andrachromantic power in the same turn. So he'll get two energy back and I'll also draw two damage from the ghost. That concludes the second round. Sarasso completed his secondary objective and Ostokar was very close to completing his secondary objective to kill the ghost. But both necromancers will not be happy with the loss of their minions. It's the third round. It's crucial who activates first in this round. Ostokar will go up to 6 energy and Sarasso will go up to 8. Let's see how much they are willing to risk. Sarasso 2 and this time Ostokar will risk 3 necromantic energy and Ostokar will activate first. And what will he do? Of course, he'll attack the ghost. His talons of darkness and his blade will pierce the ghost. Even though it's a spirit, it's still able to take damage. Offense 7 versus defense 5 and there are hits. And no critical failures luckily for Ostokara. He will do 4 points of damage to the ghost and that's exactly too much for the ghost to take. The ghost will be destroyed. Ostokar has completed his secondary objective and now he will move right up into the face of Sarasso. Then he will activate the shadow and it's another attack on the poor skeleton. And there is no reason to count here. It's already way too much. Even with the nothing but bones ability, the skeleton archer is smashed into bone dust by the shadow. Sarasso is now left with only the zombie, but it is his turn to activate. And he still has necromantic energy left. He will begin with the zombie and the zombie is too slow and too far away to reach the shadow, sadly for Sarasso, but he is moving the zombie a bit closer. And now it's up to Sarasso to deal with the Shadow and Ostokar. And he will spend energy on a negative bolt and he will aim at the Shadow. If he's successful and can destroy the Shadow, he will win this battle. Apparently Sarasso is nervous. That's a very weak roll, but there will be one hit. So D10 of damage. The Shadow is unharmed and has a durability of 9. Sarasso must roll 9 or more on a d10 to eliminate the shadow. Otherwise he'll... But it's a 10. He rolls a 10. Right where he needed it the most. The negative bolt will fry the shadow and end the shadow as well as Ostokar. With no minions left on the battlefield, Ostokar will leave. Sarasso is victorious, but maybe the victory comes with a heavy price. First, he'll try to restore the Spectre. Oh no, it's a one. His favorite spirit, the Spectre, is not able to be restored. What about the Ghost? And it's, it's a 10. The Ghost is not only restored, it's upgraded. And then the Skeleton Archer. The Archer was damaged before this battle and with a roll of 3 he is beyond repair. Two of Sarasso's trusty minions are not able to be restored after this brutal battle with Ostokar. Sarasso will now try to raise a new undead. It's a rating 2 undead and because of his research lab impedimenta he will not need a 3 but a 2. And it's a 3. And the rating 2 undead that will appear in his horde is a white. The white will join the rest of Sarasso's horde. And he will already prepare his next quest. From his battle with Ostokar, Sarasso will earn 1 XP for the win. 
one for his secondary objective, and two because he single-handedly destroyed more than two and four ratings worth of undead. 4 XP to Sarasso. Sarasso now has 9 unspent XP and I have a pretty good idea of what he will use them for. But so far, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel and I hope you'll join me for future bad reps.